Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289. So tonight we're gonna be installing some new rotors that I got from my car because as you've seen on the first video that I did, the rotors that came in the kit were warped really bad. I'm gonna show you how bad these rotors here are and also the difference in the new ones and how well they are and how they're supposed to be. So let's jump right into it. So before we check the warpness on this, I'm gonna pull the brake pads out first to give more uh, slack, cause right now it's kind of tight to turn with them being warped. Now we can put our dial indicator on here and check to see how warped it really is. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the lowest point of the rotor first by spinning it. And you see that needle is moving. All right, it starts going back up. So we're gonna go to it stops. Which is right there. Now we're gonna zero it out. Going to zero. Whoops, thing slipped. So we're on zero. What we're gonna do is turn it and see how far it goes. So we're gonna just start turning it slowly. We're at 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths. And we stop at 32 thousandths. These rotors are warped 32 thousandths, which is insane. That's a lot. Let's see, it goes back down to zero. That's the lowest point of the rotor. And there we go, goes back up to 32. So our rotors are 32 thousandths and I've actually measured these in three different spots and it ranges from 25 to 33 thousandths. So, so yeah, they're you know roughly 30 thousandths off. And you don't even have to use a dial caliper to see how far these are off. Watch the gap in between the rotor and the caliper. Look how that opens up. And then it closes back up again. Like these, that gap closes and opens. That's really bad. That's really far off. Okay, so you've seen that we, we measured that and they're about 30 thousandths off on the rotors. I called or I emailed Master Power Brakes, the company that I bought the kit from. And I told them my situation that they were warped and, and he wanted to know how much, he asked me was the uh, spindle, I'm sorry, not the spindle, the hub, fully seated to the spindle. I said, yes, made sure of that. And then he asked what was the outrun on it. So I measured this and I got back and told him that cause I measured in three different spots. Even though I didn't show it here on the video, I measured in three different spots off camera and it ranged from 25 to 33 thousandths. So I told him that in an email that it ranged from 25 to 33 thousandths from zero. And he was like, all right, no problem. We'll send you out a new set. That was Wednesday morning. I got him when I emailed him Thursday afternoon, I had new rotors. So, I want to show y'all just how far off these were and that they really are bad. I mean, that's, that's way off, you know, you know, that's really warped, you know, and that can cause hot spots, cause pulsing on the brake pedal and the steering wheel when you're driving, when you're braking, the car will start to shimmy. And these are the problems that I had with this car. I put them on there. I said, I'll just try it and see, you know, I, even though I knew they were warped, I figured I'd just try it and see. I went and drove the car at first it stopped fine, but as they heat up, as they tend to do, they will, it'll start to shimmy. And it got so bad to where not even having the brake pedal applied, the car would like shimmy. And then when you hit the brake, it was just terrible. It was just terrible. Um, sketchy to drive, uncomfortable, of course, annoying. So yeah, and I even took these rotors and had them turned. Just this, you know, I was like, you know, hell, I'll have them turn and see. So I took them to O'Reilly's to have them turn for me. And even they say, yeah, they were off pretty bad. Had them turned, brought them back, put them on the car. They were still warped even after being turned and went and drove the car again. And at first it was fine. Drove it around a little bit, but as they heated up, the more you break, you know, and there's always a little bit of friction cause the pads are always touching the disc a little bit. So it heats up, especially with it being warped or they're constantly making contact. It heats up and then it starts doing the exact same thing. Not quite as bad, but it was pulsating and everything else. 
So this is when I decided to contact Master Power Brakes. I figured maybe there's just a bad casting in these hubs. It's possible that maybe the cast is just off. It's just a bad cast and you know, whatever the case may be. So I sent, uh, sent them an email. They got back to me immediately and I have the new ones. So we're gonna install them on the car and hopefully that'll take care of the problem. I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed that they'll, it'll fix the problem. These rotors will be straight and true and no problems. So let's jump into it and uh, get these rotors changed out. All right, now I'm gonna show y'all a little trick to remove your rear bearing and seal without hurting the seal at all. You will not have to, if you've just put seals in your rotors, they sent me new seals, which by the way, one of them happened to get bent somehow. So I'm gonna reuse these seals here, they're brand new. But I'm gonna show you how to take these seals out without ever damaging them and you can reuse them again. So while the rotor's still on the spindle, you wanna take your nut and screw it back on just a few threads. And then what you wanna do is you wanna grab your rotor and this works on drum brakes as too on, on the front like this. And you pull it off and you'll kind of set it down and you'll feel it. You just kind of wanna let it rest. They're kind of like that. And take it and just like that, pull it. And there you go, you got your bearing and seal perfectly intact. Didn't hurt the seal one little bit. It's not bent or anything. You can completely reuse that seal, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so here's the new rotors. And the good thing about uh, reusing the old bearings, we don't have to pack them or anything. We just take them out of the old rotors, put them in here. Uh, first thing though, I wanna do is take a little bit of grease and pack down in this hub. So then that's taken care of. So if any grease runs out of the bearing from being heated up, there's always grease there to go back into the bearing. So before I put the caliper back up there, I'm just going to check it real quick. Just see how true it is right out of the gate. See, we got it on zero. I'm just going to spin it and see how far off it may be. See, so yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want that this rotor is within five thousandths of an inch of being true, which is phenomenal. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this right here should be perfect. All right, so I went ahead and bolted the caliper back up to make sure my gap was in, within the right specifications. It's within five thousandths of each other. This one was nine, I'm sorry, this one was 908 thousandths and this one was 905, so we're in good specs there for that. Now we just need to torque everything down. Our brake pads back in. All righty guys, well it's done. It's good, the car rides and drives so much better. The steering wheel used to do like a little shaking thing like this whenever you would drive it. And don't do that anymore because they were warped so bad, you know, because the, you know, the rotors being like this, you're constantly making contact with the brakes and it's kind of like hitting the brakes, you know. So it would have like a little shimmy to it, kind of. All that's gone. I can let go of the steering wheel. It's just as smooth as can be. I hit the brake pedal, it stops smooth. It doesn't make noise. None of that mess. 
Uh, I did have to re-shim the driver's side brake caliper. Not the passenger side. It still was fine with the gaps and all the spacing. But I had to re-shim the driver's side, which weren't a big problem, weren't a big deal. But I redid that, and now it's good to go. So, uh, yeah, but it's so much better. Nicer. It stops so much nicer. Um, and uh, these these rotors actually look better than the other ones anyway. The casting looks better, which I think that's what the problem was. I think the old ones just had a bad casting to them. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, I don't have a problem with Master Power Brakes. I like their stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you know anything about the old Shelbys from like 65, 6, and 7, the calipers that they use in this kit are just like the 67 Mustangs. You know, that would come on the 67 Mustangs and the 67 Shelbys. Uh, the exact same caliper setup. Uh, the Kelsey Hayes version is what they called it. Um, identical. As a matter of fact, they use the same brake pads. I found that out from just messing around on the O'Reilly's website because the part number for these brake pads are a D11, and that's the exact same part number that the 67 Mustangs use with disc brakes. So I thought that was cool. The rotors are stock replacement for this car. The same rotor has a, has a 67, 8 Mustang, 68, 69 Fairlane Torino, probably even a 70 or 71 Fairlane Torino, and probably even a Mustang. Uh, but, yeah. So, which works out good for me. I can go get replacement rotors for this car. If these ever get so bad over the years that they wear out, I can just go get a, a, a new set right there at the parts store, which is nice. But, uh, and the brake pads, you can buy them at O'Reilly. Like I said, it's a D11 part number. Exact same thing. Like, I pulled up a 67 Mustang. It's the exact part number that they use. So, I thought that was kind of funny and uh, ironic. But, yeah. So, I guess technically you could say I have Shelby brakes on the front of my car. 67 style 68 they changed it 68 they went to a single piston caliper on the disc brakes but 67 had the four piston caliper like this setup like they use so i thought i thought that was pretty cool um i just kind of noticed that by messing around with looking at the caliper thinking huh yeah that looks kind of like a 67 mustang caliper but i thought that was cool so yeah got that taken care of they have great stuff and pretty soon in the future i hope to be ordering the rear disc brake kit that they offer for these cars which will be pretty cool. Have a match set front and rear disc brakes. So, uh, yeah, they have good stuff. Y'all check them out. They're real friendly too. Anytime I've ever contacted them, I contacted them a couple of times before I ordered the kit to clarify things like what kind of brake pads did they use? Can you buy them at the parts store? Uh, and they say, yeah, they didn't go into all the detail that I just told you about the 67 Mustangs. I don't even know if they know, maybe they do. But they were just, I just asking, can I go to the parts store to order new brake pads or do I have to special order them? For future reference so i would know uh, and also asked them about the brake pedal when i was doing the power brake thing and they always got got up with me immediately as soon as possible and they were friendly and nice about it and dealing with this situation no problems they were friendly easy to deal with i have nothing bad to say about them so uh but yeah as always i appreciate y'all for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're not already subscribed i'd appreciate it it would help me out and leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. And if you've run into any similar problems like this on your car or truck. And uh, yeah, thank y'all for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.